Whether parading down the catwalk, gracing the glossy covers of magazines, or flickering across our television screens, supermodels are synonymous with perfection, or so many think. But one member of this much envied clan of gene pool winners is biting the hand of beauty, calling it unhealthy and unreal. My co-anchor Bill Weir reports. On the Victoria's Secret runway, there is no shortage of visual stimulation. But when's the last time you saw these models hang around for an intellectually stimulating Q&A after the show? On the pages of Vogue, there's no shortage of genetic or cosmetic perfection, but you never see the women in the picture attach an insightful essay on the human condition. In fact, we rarely even know their names because our beauty-obsessed culture has decided that models are to be seen and not heard. A thousand people staring at me, which was sort of... Which is why this model, Cameron Russell, is creating such a buzz. Not for how she looks on the cover of magazines, photo shoots for Vogue and Givenchy, and not for her moves on the Victoria's Secret runway. And it doesn't always make me happy. No, it is what she said on the stage of a TED conference. I should not have worn this dress. In front of a room of gape-jawed intellectuals, she began by changing out of a little black number into a sensible sweater and flats in order to transform the perception of herself. I am on this stage because I am a pretty white woman. In my industry, we call that a sexy girl. And this is a legacy that was built for me, and it's a legacy that I've been cashing out on. In just 10 minutes, she yanked back the curtain on the glossy photos that helped build her career, showing how the industry creates a mirage of sexuality on the flawless bone structure of girls too young to have boyfriends. This picture is the very first time that I had worn a bikini, and I didn't even have my period yet. This is what I looked like with my grandma just um, a few months earlier. She described frustration with a society that stops and frisks a disproportionate number of young black men while she enjoys the perks of being a thin white girl. Because I'm a model, because I've been in magazines looking a certain way, there are lots of people who are interested in hearing what I have to say. And I think that's fairly superficial. I'm quite young, I don't have like an impressive resume. And despite all the perks, she then shared the one bit of career advice she gives to little girls who want to be models. Aim higher. A ton of little girls that I talk to, they want to be like actresses or singers or models. It requires a genetic lottery win, really. And just a lot of luck. You know, don't aspire to be a model. It's not something that you have control over. I wonder, were you biting the hand that feeds a little bit and saying that it's all a airbrushed facade? What I was getting at there is that the barrier to entry to being a model is not hard work. You don't need a degree. You don't need to win an award. It's just about how you look. Hang out with her around town or in the studio, and you can see how any mention of her looks makes her squirm. She's just beautiful. She has a perfect bone structure. Oh, please. For her makeup. Her personality. Though. And her yeah. personality. <laughs> she claims she eats pretty much whatever she wants. My last two years of high school, I think I went to Burger King every single day for lunch. Only exercises for fun. I go to yoga. I bike around the city. Further proof of her point that models do not work their way to stardom Instead, they are born lucky. They won the genetic lottery, the universal attraction that comes with near-perfect symmetry. If the distance between your ears is almost exactly two times wider than the distance between your eyes, strangers will want to mate with you because symmetry equals health. But while our biological definition of gorgeous is unchanging, today's models also won the fashion lottery with rules that change through time and culture. The Mona Lisa might have a tough time getting booked for Vogue today, and Cameron would be way too skinny to model for the Renaissance masters. But being born into a culture where tall and thin is in can create body image angst, even among the women in the pictures. You just need to meet a group of models because they have the thinnest thighs and the shiniest hair and the coolest clothes, and they're the most physically insecure women probably on the planet. I've never personally been anorexic. I'm not promoting anything totally unhealthy because I'm not unhealthy but I am promoting an ideal that's maybe not attainable. And for that, I have to feel guilty and I have to assume some blame for that. I mean, you, would you ever consider leaving the industry uh, out of principle? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I don't think fashion is evil. I think some people definitely got at that issue when they were saying, yeah, but you still work in this industry and you still promote a skinny white beauty ideal. I have to say, yeah, that's true. And that is unfortunate. I hope that the, the benefits outweigh the cost. Russell's not the first to wrestle with perceived perfection. A few years back, Dove Soap waited in this territory with the Real Beauty campaign. 
They made a short film to show how makeup and digital wizardry can transform a real woman into a model. It made a splash, but did little to change the multi-billion dollar fashion industry. But with her newfound attention, Cameron's going the other way. I think there is a very interesting perspective, especially for women in media. Transforming feminist writers and artists and organizers into runway-ready glamazons, part of an effort to help them get their voices heard. Our goal was to sort of make these women look powerful and, you know, cool and sort of play with the power of a fashion image. I feel like a cartoon. Uh, they have this much hair. <laughs> As an artist on a fight for social justice, Marissa jumped at the chance to be seen in a whole new way. I think if you're going to see this version of me, then you should also see the real version of me. It seems like there's a bit of cognitive dissonance. I'm yeah. looking at the idea that you have to take a feminist and put her through this fashion car wash in order for us to pay attention on the other side. We said, what if we did a mockery of what mass media wants? What mass media wants, like all this hair and makeup. What if we did that and then we gave you a moment to have your voice next to that picture. She admits she is still figuring it out as she goes along, but the next time you see this face on a magazine, know that she'd rather earn your respect with her ideas than her looks. Look, we can't just pay attention to women that look fantastic in a photograph, because there are a ton of women that have fantastic things to say that don't look like 25-year-old white models. I'm Bill Weir for Nightline in New York City.